British Empire. For two years, the conflict wore on from the British colonies of Canada to America's southern coast and out across the high seas. The draw of U.S. forces from Canada and damage America's economy and morale, the British Navy attacked and blockaded the nation's east coast heartland. Up and down the Chesapeake Bay they raided, destroying towns and farms and spreading fear. Then, in August 1814, disaster. The invading British seized Washington, D.C. and burned the nation's capital. A citizen soldier of Baltimore spoke for many. Every American heart is bursting with shame and indignation at the catastrophe. And Baltimore hearts were also full of anxiety, for they feared they would be next. detained key amidst their massing warships. On the outskirts of Baltimore, citizens, men and women, militia, and regular troops desperately prepared defenses. They dug almost a mile of earth and trenching and waited with bated breath. On September 12th, British soldiers landed at North Point where a bloody battle with Maryland militia failed to halt their march towards Baltimore. However, the British could not tackle the city's earthwork defenses and troop reinforcements without their Navy's help. The next day, the British bomb ships would open up their main assault with a ferocious bombardment. Their target, Fort McHenry. They had to knock out the fort to bring their ships in range of the city. The fate of Baltimore now lay in the hands of the fort's defenders. The British fleet pounded the fort with rockets and mortar shells. soaked night. But still, the British bombs and rockets thundered over the fort, exploding deadly shrapnel in all directions. The fort's defenders were, in the words of one citizen soldier, like pigeons tied by their legs. The American artillery answered the British with desperate return fire. But would it be enough? Baltimore citizens watched in panic through the night. One recalled, The attack on Fort McHenry was distinctly seen from Fenton Hill and from the tops of houses which were covered with men, women, and children. Fort, but whose? 
Through the long night, Francis Scott Key had been forced to watch the bombardment from among the enemy fleet. Not at all? Nothing. Now, he strained to see the flag in the dawn's early light. Tis the star-spangled banner. Oh, long may it wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. As the British withdrew, Key returned to Baltimore, where his words soon found music and a publisher, and the star-spangled banner was born. He captured a defiant, patriotic spirit and spread rapidly across the nation, pouring new life into the national flag as a symbol of American identity. The popularity of the song and the flag grew during the years that followed. The Star Spangled Banner eventually became the official anthem of the United States in 1931. Inspired by the brave defense of Fort McHenry, Francis Scott Key's words and the flag they so memorably portray are now woven into our sense of national identity. These words still resonate as loudly today as the glaring rockets and bursting bombs of 1814. Oh, say that.